I've seen a lot of this kind of videos all over the internet before. In today's video, we'll actually learn how we can create them by ourselves on Blender. It's going to be really simple, so let's figure out how to do it. In our default scene, we'll press X to delete our default cube and then press Shift A followed by Mesh UV Sphere. Now we'll press Ctrl 2 to give it a subdivision surface of level 2 and we'll go to the object panel over here and choose Shade Smooth. Now this is going to act as our sun and to actually create the planets, we can press Shift D to create a new version and assume that this is our first planet. Now before we move it to the side, we'll press tab to go into edit mode so that the origin remains in the center right now. And then we can press GX and move it to the side by something like 4 units. Now to see the precision and movements, you can always press 1 to go into your front view and that way you just have a better understanding of how much you've moved it by. Now if you want to change the scale or anything like that, always make sure that you're in edit mode and then select everything and press S and scale it down. So in this case, I'll just scale it down by 0.5 and then press tab to go back into object mode. In object mode, I can create the next planet by pressing shift D and to move the planet, press tab GX and move it by another few units. And then you can do the same thing again to create the third planet. So I'll press shift D, tab to go into edit mode, GX and move it to the side. Now you can always position these as well, but if you want to change the position later on, make sure that you're changing the position in edit mode so that the origin remains. You could always place the origin later on in different ways, but I think moving it in edit mode just saves us the hassle later on. Next, Next, we can resize them. So let's select the first planet, tab into edit mode and scale this one down by another 0.7. Maybe this middle one, we can press tab and scale it up by 1.2. And maybe this last one, we can scale it down by 0.9. So that just gives us some variation in the size of our planets. And now let's create the moons. So let's select the first one, press shift D. And this time we're actually gonna press object, set origin to geometry, and then we'll press tab to go into edit mode, GX and move it to the side. The reason we're doing this is because this is going to orbit around the planet. So by keeping the origin in the planet, the animation will become much easier. Next again, we'll press tab and change the scale so that we get the right size and we can place this as well closer or further away from the planet based on your preference. Then we'll press tab to go back into object mode after which we'll select this object, press shift D object, set origin to geometry, then tab to go into edit mode, A to select everything, GX, move it to the side, scale it down and then press tab, shift D, enter, tab, GX, move it to this side this time maybe and maybe scale this one down as well and maybe I'll create a third moon for this. So again, shift D, tab, GX, bring it to the side and scale it up. Now these three are moons for this particular planet. Now let's create a moon for this planet and I want to move it a bit further to the side so that it doesn't clash with these moons. So I'll tab GX and then press shift D, enter object, set origin to geometry, tab GX, bring it to the side, scale it down GX and do that again. So shift D, tab GX and scale it down. So once you have all of your planets and their moons, we can start off parenting everything accordingly. So this moon belongs to this planet. So shift select the planet, control P, set parent to object. Now these three moons belong to this central planet. So select all the three moons. You can press shift select, select multiple things and make sure that you select the planet at the end and then press control P set parent to object. Finally, you can select these two moons and then shift select the planet at the end and press control P set parent to object. Next, we can deal with the animation. So again, we're just going to be using a lot of tips and tricks. So this will be useful for you in many different situations. So to see the rotation about the planet, I actually want to rotate it about the Z axis. So I'll press seven to go into my top view and then I'll select the first planet, increase the timeline by a little bit and also will change our end frame to 360 and when we rotate this we have to make sure that it completes 360 degrees or any multiple of 360 degrees every time we reach 360. So we could add in a keyframe at 360 degrees on frame 60 so that it does six rotations before 360. Essentially, it should do whole number of rotations before the end. So for this one, I'll add in a keyframe at 120 so that it does three rotations by the time it reaches frame 360. So let's go to frame zero, tap I rotation, and then go to frame 120 and then press RZ360 and then tap I rotation. Now we have to come down here, press A to select all the keyframes, T and then linear so that we get a nice smooth rotation from frame zero to frame 120. Now to make this continue rotating even after frame 120, we can use a few modifiers. So let's change our timeline to the graph editor, expand it a little bit more and then expand the object transforms menu and just hide the X 
and Y keyframes. Then select the Z keyframe and just zoom in or zoom out. You can press control middle mouse button to zoom in on the vertical and horizontal axes. After which we'll go to our modifiers tab over here. If this panel is not present, you have to press N to bring it out and then click on add modifier cycles. Now for the cycles, the after mode, we don't want it to repeat motion. We want to repeat motion with offset. And for the before mode, we don't need any cycles. So we'll just change this to no cycles. Now, if you watch the animation, you'll see that it continues rotating even after we go through the last keyframe. Now we just apply this to every single one of our objects. And we can do that really easily by just selecting all of these objects and then making sure we select the planet that we added in this animation to last and then press control L link animation data. Now all the planets will be doing exactly that. And even the moons will be doing that along with their planets, but we have to randomize this. So we'll go ahead and start off by randomizing the rotations for the planets. So on frame zero, we'll select this particular sphere. And if we were to directly move this right now, because they are all linked, they're all going to have the same change that we just made. So we want each of them to have their own animation. So let's select all of them again, go to object relations. And over here, you can click make single user for the object animations. That way, if we make changes to any one of them, the changes will not reflect on all the others. So now let's select the next planet. And this I want to make two rounds before it finishes. So that means we have to go to frame 240. So just select this, press GX and move it to frame 240. So you can zoom in and then just press GX and move it to frame 240. Now when you play it, this one is going to make three full rotations and the outer one is going to make two full rotations. Now this outermost one, I wanted to make only one full rotation. So I'll take this, press GX and move it all the way to 360. So once this is on frame 360, this one will make one full rotation in the exact same time frame. Now this one is not coming to the exact location because this shouldn't have been 240. If we wanted to make two rotations, we have to divide 360 by two and 360 by two is 180. So this should have been present at frame 180. So let's go to frame 180 and then select this, press GX and move it to there. And then we can go ahead. And now when we go to frame 360, all of them should line up perfectly. But we don't want this alignment to occur every single time because that just looks unnatural. So to make this alignment happen or not happen, we can use the Delta keyframes. So let's go to the Delta transforms and just change this Z rotation by a little bit. And we can do the same thing for this one as well so that none of them line up. So now when we go to frame 360, they're all in random locations. Same thing on frame zero, they're on random locations. Even this one, I don't want it to be perfectly on the X axis. So I'll just change the Z value by a little bit. Now we can repeat this exact same process for all of the moons as well. So let's say I want this moon to do three full rotations. I'll keep it at 120 itself. But let's say I want this moon to do two rotations. I'll take the keyframe, go to frame 180 and then press GX and move it to exactly 180. That way the speed of the rotation of these moons also start changing. Now I can change this one as well to make only one rotation. So let's take this one GX and move it till 360. But essentially you can use anything that is divisible by 360. So I could take this moon over here and make it rotate six times. So I would do 360 by six, which is 60. So I have to go to frame 60 and take this keyframe, press GX and move it to exactly there. So by doing that, you actually randomize the motion of these moons as well. And you can play around with this until you get motion that you're happy with for all of the different moons and planets. Again, if you don't want them to keep aligning up, you can select it, go to the Delta transforms and give it some random rotations on the Z values. By doing that, they will no longer line up and they will look a lot more natural. Once you've done that for all of the different moons and planets, you can go ahead and give all of these their own materials. So to give them materials, you can select the sun, go to the material properties, press new, label it as sun, and then select one of the planets. And I want all of these to have very similar materials. So I'll press this plus button, call it planet one, and I'll make it either completely metallic with the roughness of 0.4 or I'll make it non-metallic and completely rough. I'll actually make a decision just before rendering, but I'll show you what it looks like when it's completely metallic. Once I do that, I want all the planets to have the same material. So let's select planet, but I don't want it to have the same colors. To change the colors, I press this button so that it becomes its own user. And I'll do the same thing for the last one. I'll select planet 001, press this, and now it's its own material. Next for the moons, maybe I can keep these rough. So I'll add in a new material, call this moon. And for this metallic zero, roughness all the way at one. And then just 
just give all of these moons the same material but their own versions so let's select moon and then press this and do that for all of the different moons that are present once you're done with that we can switch on all of our defaults and then start with the actual materials so let's go to our render properties switch on ambient occlusion expand it increase the distance to something high so let's say 10 and maybe increase the factor to 2 or we'll keep it at 1 we'll also switch on bloom and screen space reflections then we'll go to our output properties change the frame rate to 30 frames per second end frame we've already selected for the output folder you can choose where you want to save it and for the file format i'm going to choose ffmpeg video for the encoding i'm going to change the container from matroska to mpeg4 and have an output quality of perceptually free lossless then i'll press shift a and search for a mesh plane and scale it up by quite a bit so let's go with a value of 15 and then press gz and just move it down till it rests just below the sun if you want you can press one to go into the side view and move it down by just another 0.1 as well so that there's a little gap between the sun and the floor then i'll change my viewport display to rendered so that i can actually see the changes that i make and if you want you could remove the light and go to the world properties and increase the color so that you get a lot more ambient lighting i'm going to keep it just like this but i'm also going to select the light and press alt g to clear location and press gz to just bring it up above the sun or keep it at the original itself but for the sun material i'm gonna go down to the shadow mode and choose none and that way light will be able to penetrate through it and i guess that'll actually cause better reflections next for the sun material i'll go ahead and increase the emission value all the way to a white value and change the color to a yellowish color after which i'll just increase the emission strength to something really high so that it looks completely white and it is the bloom that you can see that gives it the color and since i'm making it yellowish i'll also go to the light and change that color to a yellowish color as well next for the plane i'll go ahead and add in a new material i'll call it floor and i'll reduce the roughness all the way to zero so that there are really nice reflections and just so that the light doesn't appear as a single dot here i'll actually match the radius of the light to the radius of the sun so by doing that we get a nice reflection on the floor as well and i think that's good enough next i'll switch off the overlays and i'll start working with the planets so for the first planet i'll just give it maybe a slightly bluish color maybe for this one i can make it a red color and for the last one i'll go with a very desaturated bluish purple and now I can do the same thing for all of the moons. So just select a moon and give it some color that you think will suit. They can be completely random or they can be something that you specifically choose for whatever reason you require that color. But essentially that's all there is to creating this particular scene. If you want better reflections even for these planets, you can actually press shift A and search for a light probe reflection plane. And to actually see the plane, you'll have to switch on overlays again. After which you can press GZ and just bring it to the exact height of the plane and then press S and scale it up. Then play around with the Z value until you get really nice reflections. So exactly at this value you see complete reflections occurring but if you were to just move it up this is what it looks like from just the screen space reflections and this is what it looks like because of the reflection plane so it's up to you as to what type of reflections you like but i'll keep it as is and i'll actually change the base color of the floor to an even brighter white or you could go to a dark black as well it's really up to you and you get different variations accordingly but i'll leave it like this for now maybe for my actual background i want it to be completely white so i'll change from the graph editor back to the shader editor and i'll change this from object to world and i'll expand it a little bit duplicate the background node by pressing shift d mixing them together using a mixed shader node plug that in plug the second background in there and make this a very bright white then press shift a and search for a light path node and take the is camera ray and plug it into the factor so that if it is being viewed through the camera it'll be completely white otherwise it'll get this darkish color so what i actually want to do is keep this as a bright white and change the strength for what we see to a much higher number like two so that it becomes more white apart from that if you're still not liking the background another thing that you could do is just remove all of these have just the background and then switch on your overlays press tab with the floor plane selected go to edge select mode select the edge that is going to be away from where you're looking and press easy to bring it up then you can select this edge press ctrl b to add in a bevel and just bevel it in and use your scroll wheel to add in the number of cuts in the bevel then for this as well you can right click and click shade smooth the last thing you have to do before rendering is actually place your camera so let's select the camera press alt g to clear location alt r to clear rotation and then press rx 90 to rotate it on the x-axis by 90 degrees press gy to just bring it back on the y-axis and then press zero to go into your camera 
of view. Now to not see anything outside your camera, you can go to the camera properties here, expand viewport display and increase passport out all the way to one. Then you can switch off overlays and you can just render this out if you want, or you can always go to the object properties and change this location on the Y to zoom in or zoom out. So that's really up to you, but you could render it out just like this. If you don't want any of these shadows to be formed on the back wall, you can select your light and just switch off shadows altogether and that'll be good enough. Beyond that, another camera position that you could do is move it up on the Z axis by a little bit more and then rotate it on the X axis, point it down onto these rotating planets. If you want to make sure that the sun is centralized after that, you can always go to the composition guides and switch on center and switch on overlays so that you can actually make sure that the sun is perfectly at the center. Once you've done that, you could render it out like this as well, but that's actually all there is for this particular animation. If you're happy with it, you can press render animation. I really hope you enjoyed that particular tutorial and you can create various different animations using it. First off, thank you so much for watching. And if you liked that video, be sure to check out other videos on my channel as well. If you have any questions, comments, or queries, let me know down below and I'll be sure to respond to as many of them for as long as I possibly can. Until my next video comes out tomorrow, keep creating and stay creative.